Hey guys, welcome to Going Deeper for Centenary United Methodist Church. Um, our video that we saw um, earlier talked a lot about um, the different miracles that Jesus did, and I want to kind of focus in on one of them, and that was the feeding of the 5,000 with the bread um, and the fish. And I want to take it just a little bit deeper into kind of um, um, the foreshadowing that, that happened um, before this. If you'll remember back, way back when um, Moses had led the people, the Israelites, into the desert, there was a time where they were grumbling and complaining, as usual, about not having water and not having food. And God told them, through Moses, not to worry about it, that each morning when they woke up, there would be sustenance for them. There would be bread for them. And that bread was called manna, M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, manna. And they were to gather it each morning just enough to satisfy them, whatever it was that they needed to satisfy them. They weren't to take extra to keep it for the next day because God had promised them that he would provide it for them every day. And so they didn't. And even those when they tried to take extra, they would find that by the next day it had completely spoiled and it rotted. So God was training them then to know that their sustenance, what they needed to survive, their bread was coming from him and it was coming each day and it was going to be exactly what they needed. It would be enough. So that's one you know, particular way that, um, that Jesus um, is foreshadow foreshadowed in the giving of the manna. If you will think about it, Jesus said before in the book of John that he was the bread of life. In other words, he, gave, he gives these people, he gives us exactly what we need to live. And it's not just filling our stomachs up that this bread of life from Jesus gives us, but it fills our hearts up, it fills our souls up. It provides everything that we absolutely need to, to survive. Jesus, the bread of life. So he was showing the people, the 5,000 that were on the mountaintop, again, how he was the bread of life through the miracle that he did taking those five little um, rolls, essentially, and turning them into enough bread to feed 5,000. Now, in the Bible, it says 5,000 men. So we know that there were many more women and children that were there, and they just weren't spoken about to begin with. So we had to feed them, too. Also, this particular story was in all four of the Gospels. It was in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So it points out that it did happen, indeed, and that it was a very important story, something that we need to listen to and we need to remember that Jesus provided completely and totally for all of those people. He satisfied them. He filled them up. And then there was some left over. There was plenty. And there was enough in 12 baskets for the 12 disciples to have what they might need too because he was sure that he needed to take care of them also. So Jesus provided completely for these people the bread of life, just like God provided in the book of Exodus for the, Israel, for the Israelites as they wandered in the desert. Each day provided enough for them for the day. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing that we needed to you know, look at and remember. But there's one more foreshadowing. When Jesus took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks for it to God, that, the word that they use um, in, um, I think it's in Greek, in Greek, in Greek, to give thanks is Eucharisto, which is um, our word that we use is Eucharist. And what Eucharist is for us is the Lord's Supper. It's where we in church celebrate the receiving of the bread that we dip in the, the juice, the wine, um, that we dip in and then we eat that in remembrance of Jesus. So it was almost like it was a beginning, a foreshadowing of the Last Supper, which now for us each uh, month or each time that it's given is a remembrance of Jesus, how he is our bread of life and how he sustains us. He keeps us going, it's both spiritually in our hearts and in our souls. And he provides for us when, when we need things. He is a provider of that. 
just like he was for the 5,000. So I think that's kind of a neat way to look at that story, that it wasn't just a miracle, which it was, it absolutely was, but it's also a remembrance back to past times that God was sufficient for the people, more than sufficient for the people, and to the future time of Jesus having the um, Last Supper with his disciples, and then even more future times of us each time we have um, the, um, the Lord's Supper, which time we celebrate communion. Um, and just you know, for you, just FYI for you, for you all, um, we still do communion here at St. Mary. We do it um, monthly, and we have um, everything in a package now. Um, you don't go up and receive a, um, a piece of bread, and then you dip it in the, water, in the juice like we used to do. Now, because of the COVID restrictions, it's all in a little package. So you have your little cup that's got your juice in it, and you've got your little bread, and you can dip it if you want to, but then you can do, you can eat the bread, and you can drink um, drink the, uh, the juice that's in it. So it's, they, it's here for you if you would like to um, continue to participate in it, and it's something that um, we have tried to do very safely for you so that, you know, it's not something that um, any other hands have touched except for yours. Um, so I hope, hope you'll consider that. Um, we look forward to the time that you come back to us and that you come back and join us in service. Um, I, I realize that everybody has different comfort levels, but please know, please, please know that we have done everything that we can to make it as safe as we possibly can. We have UV lights in the air handlers so that the air is constantly being cleaned. We have um, a fogger that we built that's got this little thing on that you spray around and it kills all the germs that are around. We spray down all of the seats and all of the door handles and we have masks and we have, um, we have sanitizer and we're doing everything that we possibly can to make it as safe as we, poss as we can for you guys. Um, Children's Church, certainly, you know, it's, it's a younger group that's in there right now but we're wearing masks and we're making sure that we're cleaning and keeping everyone as separate as we can. Um, hopefully as the weather turns, if it will continue to be as pretty as it's been, we'll um, start meeting back outside again. So we'll be out in that air. So we're, we're trying to make it very safe for you all. And we hope that you will consider to come back soon. Um, know that we miss you and that we love you and that we know that you know, everyone has different comfort levels with things, but that we're thinking about you all the time and praying for you. Um, in about two weeks, you'll re be receiving your Easter information um, with e stuffed Easter eggs for you and um, some lessons, and, and I hope that you will take time as a family to participate in those. Um, blessings to you all. Have a good week.